Hey problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to do a quick video on how to add and subtract fractions. And there's a couple of funny things about adding and subtracting fractions and I'll explain um, some of the tricks behind it. So multiplication is easy. You just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 4 is 8. So 1 half times 3 fourths is 3 eighths. And that even makes sense because what I'm saying here is what is half of 3 quarters? Well, it's 3 eighths. But if I want to add, and I add across the top, I go 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. And it will give me 4 six or 2 thirds. And that is incorrect. And the reason why that's incorrect is that the order of operations is multiplication or division before addition and subtraction. So it's an order of operations issue. And really what a fraction is, is a division problem. So you're really dividing 3 by 4 and you're dividing 1 by 2. And that division has to be taken into account. And that's why adding and subtracting fractions is harder than multiplying and dividing them. The way you add fractions is they have to have the bottom number has to be the same. So the denominator has to be the same. So let's say I have 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. The bottom numbers are already the same. I add across the top to get 3 plus 1 is 4. And I keep the bottom number 4. And that makes sense, right? 3 quarters plus 1 quarters is 4 quarters or just equal to 1. The problem comes up when I don't have the same bottom number. So to get that bottom number the same, it's called a common denominator. I have to figure out what I need to multiply the fraction by to give it the same denominator. So in this case, 4 is going to be my common denominator. This fraction is already there, and this one has to get there. So the way I get there is I multiply it by 2 over 2. I'm multiplying by a factor of 1 so it doesn't affect the value. But now what I have is I multiply across the top to get 2 over 4 plus 3 over 4. Now I add across the top to get 5. I keep the bottom of 4. And now I have 5 fourths. And to make that a mixed number, I could go 4 into 5. goes in one time with 1 left over. And I have 1 and 1 quarter. Okay, let's look at three scenarios now. First scenario is the denominator is already the same. That's kind of the easy case. The next scenario is that I just have to multiply one of my fractions by a factor of one to get a common denominator. And then the third scenario is I have to multiply both of my fractions by one to get a common denominator. So let's start on the top. That bottom number is already the same. I add across the top, 5 plus 7 is 12. I keep that bottom number of 16, and I'm done. That's it. I can reduce that. 4 will go into here 3 times, and 4 will go into here 4 times. So I reduce it to 3 fourths. Next scenario right here, my common denominator is going to be 8. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2 to get an 8 in the bottom here. So I'm going to have that red 3 eighths that I started with, plus 2 eighths. All right, so this turns into 2 eighths. Now that I have my common denominator, I add across the top to get 5. I keep the bottom number 8. So now I have 5 eighths. And then the third scenario here is that 2 is not going to go into 3. 3 is not going to go into 2. So I have to multiply both fractions by something to get a common denominator. That common denominator is going to have to be 6. That's the lowest number both of these will go into. So I multiply this by 3 over 3. That's a factor of 1. So it doesn't affect the value. So this thing right here is going to give me 3, 6. I'm going to multiply the 1 third by 2 over 2. That's also going to give me a 6 in the bottom. It's a factor of 1. doesn't affect the value. So the second term becomes 2, 6. And then I add across the top to get 5. I keep the common denominator of 6. So 1 half plus 1 third is 5, 6. Okay, here are three practice problems. Why don't you pause the video really quickly and do these three problems, and then I'll do them. First case scenario, common denominator is already there. I just add across the top, 5. Keep the bottom the same, 8. 
Second case scenario right here, common denominator is gonna be 16. I'm already there with this 16, but this one needs to get to a 16. So I'm gonna multiply it by two over two. So this is five sixteenths, my first fraction, plus six sixteenths, which is gonna be 11 sixteenths. Add across the top, keep the bottom the same. And then my third case scenario is what number are both of these gonna go into? Well, the first number is gonna be 15. So I'm gonna to have to multiply this by a three over a three to get a 15. This is equal to one, so I'm not changing the value. I multiply this by five over five. That'll give me a 15. Again, this is a one, so I don't change the value. The numerator here is 10 fifteenths plus nine fifteenths. Now I have that common denominator. I add across the top. 19 fifteenths. So 19 fifteenths is correct. Or as a mixed number, I could have one and four fifteenths. Okay, I also have three subtraction problems here. Pause the video and do these really quickly. Subtraction is going to be exactly the same. Both addition and subtraction, you need a common denominator. So go ahead and do these and then watch how I do them. Make sure you did them correctly. Okay, if you've done these problems, I have a common denominator in my first case scenario. 3 minus 2 is 1. Keep that common denominator 8. Next case scenario, I need a common denominator. Again, it's going to be 16. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. That's going to be 5 sixteenths minus 6 sixteenths. And that's going to give me 5 minus 6, negative 1 sixteenth. And then lastly, my third scenario, same as the last problem except for I change these to subtraction. Common denominator is 15. I'll multiply by five over five here. I'll multiply by three over three here. That's gonna give me 10 fifteenths minus nine, right, fifteenths. Subtract the numerators, 10 minus nine is one. Keep the bottom number or the denominator the same, and I have one fifteenth. So hopefully this helped you out in adding and subtracting fractions. It's not too bad once you get the rule figured out and some of the tricks figured out. The key is you have to have a common denominator before you add or subtract fractions. Thank you for watching.